Yo, what's up, High Performers? Welcome to a, another episode of the Can't Believe I Made a Podcast. I am your High Performance Mentor, Podcast Host, Registered Dietitian, Desi Abeda. All right, people, what's good? I mean, we're coming on the heels uh, for those. Happy Valentine's Day. Hopefully, you get some some time to share with a loved one or to love on yourself. I mean, you don't need a partner to still express some love. I mean, in your case, it'll be a lot of self-love. So hopefully you get that opportunity just to remind yourself about all the really great things that are happening in your life. And we come on the heels of the Super Bowl, the halftime show. Uh, I can't just from my standpoint as a huge uh, football fan and hip hop fan, the uh, the kid and child in me was just so hyped uh, just to be able to see those musical performances and to be able to create that type of nostalgia. You know, I posted something on on my stories today that I thought just kind of like really rang true. When we look at nostalgia, oftentimes we we go back into another time where we had some healthy and happy attachments to certain things that were going on in our life. And for most of us who are listening to this pod have likely grown up with a lot of who we listen to during the halftime show. So I hope the nostalgia kid in you was screaming and, and having so much fun. Uh, I saw a really funny tweet and meme that was like that halftime show both reminded me that I'm old and I'm still relevant. <laughs> I felt that I felt that in my bones, but in, in a lot of ways too, and this kind of transitions into our part three of our mentorship Monday unlocking your limiting beliefs. You know, I, I was looking at the players and I think one of the coolest things when you see someone get to the top of the, you know, the top echelon of competition, you know, in their careers, entrepreneurship, like whatever that is, like there are these moments where you just cry tears of joy. And it's really cool to see men cry those tears of joy because for so many reasons, there's a huge stigma with, with most guys still. And, and I tend to find that this happens a lot, right? For most men, you kind of step into things, especially, especially when crazy things happen in your life of just like, you know, don't show weakness. Don't, don't show pain. I have to be this person for me or my family or whatever that is. And it's a really nice gesture and a really nice example of when these guys get to express their emotion. There's, and this is also me working with elite level athletes, professional athletes too. Like I know the type of work that goes into their craft and what, what is expected of them, but even more so what they expect of themselves. So when I see guys cry out of joy, when they're out there, like top of the mountain of their given field or, or their given sport, the one thing that I keep thinking about is, wow, what you practice in private gets rewarded in public. Let me go ahead and repeat that one more time because I think it's important for us to understand that. What you practice in private gets rewarded in public. Now, if you're not one who ever wants to step on any sort of stage or receive any sort of trophy, you can still resonate with this because there are going to be moments in your life, hopefully, that you are just so grateful that you took that jump, that you took that chance. You took that chance on yourself. You know, stepping away from, from baseball was probably one of the hardest things I had to do because... If you would have asked me a long time ago, like, hey, Des, you're going to turn down a major and minor league job uh, to go do something on your own. I would have been like, are you kidding me? Like a professional sports dietitian? Like, yeah, I want to do that. But it kind of just came to a point where I was like, you know, I like that saying, like, you know, shit or get off the pot. You know, I, I've been talking about going in on, on myself for quite some time now. And it's I think it's time for me to go ahead and be what I'm about. And, and trust that I'm going to figure it out. And I'm so thankful for that. So in so many ways, seeing these guys express their emotion in that way was so cool. And it also just reminded me of that, that really important thing. You know, what you do in private gets rewarded in public. And that's how you feel, how you act and what you do. Right. And, and, and I think that's really important. And this kind of takes us into the limiting belief talk that we're having with our mentorship Monday. All right. So in part one, we talked about the reticular activating system. So this is going to be a little bit more of a recap episode and helping you to understand what you need to do next. All right. So in, in part one, we talked about the reticular activating system. So it's like your brain's algorithm, if you will. You already know by now that if you're kind of looking on your feed and it's a bunch of negativity and it's a bunch of things that aren't really fulfilling to you, you're, you're likely going to be a person that's not going to be very happy or joyous about your life. All right. So with the reticular activating system, it was that filter. And so the more that you try to really work and on overcoming your limiting beliefs, the more that your mind and, and, and really your environment is going to show you ways in which you're progressing. 
right? So in, in the second one, we looked at the iceberg model. We looked at how attitudes, beliefs really play a, really play a big role in your words and your actions. So in the third one, I wanted us to rehash what is a limiting belief? You know, we know that a limiting belief is a judgment about yourself that you think to be true that restricts you in some sort of way. We can likely fill in the blanks in a couple places here, right? Um, I'm not enough. That's too much money. Um, I don't have time. That I don't have time thing is 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 really hard for me, um, especially when I hear it too. Or I'm lazy. Like those two things for me, like really, when I hear someone say that, it's it's really hard for me not to want to bash them over the head with like, you have so much untapped potential, you don't even know. But then again, I, I kind of st take a step back and be like, look, unless this person is working with me or unless they're asking for my help, maybe it's my position or maybe my, it's my role just to hold space and ask them, what does that really mean for you? Because in a lot of ways, what you are going to be able to, what, what you want to prioritize, you're going to find a way to do it. I think for any of us as parents, we've just like, Anyone who's ever been in a damn relationship, you're just doing the best you can. And that's the same thing with parenting too, right? So for my parents out there, you're just doing the best you can. And you don't know if you're doing it right, but you know that you want to help create a healthy individual. And you know that likely is going to stem from your actions and your belief systems. So when we go back to this, it's really important for us to understand those limiting beliefs and understand like what those things are for you. All right. So in the first one and two episodes, we talked about naming that limiting belief, right? Putting it, you know, inviting all pieces of you to the table in the morning for coffee. And you'd be like, okay, what does everyone have to say this morning? What sort of shit talking is happening in my life right now? That is just, let's put this on the table. So we want to name that limiting belief. And then beyond that, we want to fact check. We want to get to the facts. Is what I'm saying actually true? I can tell you just from experience, I don't know your exact limiting belief, but I'm sure it stems from some sort of core wound or past wound or past message that you got, maybe as a kid or maybe as a young adult, or maybe that you're receiving right now in your given field, in your given business or endeavor or creative endeavor, whatever that is, we need to make sure that we fact check what is being said. Because if you say something like, I don't have time, and you fact check it, and then you actually look at your, your screen time, for all of us iOS people, we get screen updates, right? This is how many times you were looking at your screen. Then you get to fact check that. And then maybe you also look at the data behind how often you're, you know, watching a show, Hulu, Netflix, right? So you get to fact check that. And once you fact check it, then you can create a new belief system. Because that's where I kind of go back when people are like, you know, I'm lazy. And I'll help them to understand that it's not so much about laziness that is the issue here. It's likely that the things that you really want to do for yourself, you're kind of putting towards the end of the day. And by the end of the day, you would have already made a shit ton of decisions. And so it's not that you're lazy. It's that you're decision fatigued. It's very unlikely that if you're trying to create a new habit around exercise and you schedule that exercise for after dinner around 8 or 830, and especially if it's been some time or maybe it's just you have not gotten in the routine ever, it makes total sense that you're like, you know what? <laughs> some food or some TV or something else. I'm going to go do that cuz that's just like low energy. I don't have to I don't have to think about doing anything. I don't have to I don't have to do anything with that. And so it's not that you're lazy, it's that you're decision fatigued. So when we create a new belief system, we're trying to create it out of curiosity. We're trying to be like, okay, I wonder what it means when this happens for me. versus that shaming language, right? You should be doing this. You know, it, it never works out for us. We might we might, you know, falter under the lie or the limiting belief that that's how you want to be talked to. But let's get real. We, none of us like that. You know, there's a select few of the David Goggins people that really love that. And even then, as I listen to him, I'm a huge, huge fan, but I'm also aware like, okay, I wouldn't tell myself some of these things, but I also know in my psyche that there are moments where I have to be like, Des, get your ass up and go do that thing that you know, that's going to be best for you. I have to like yell that in my head. All right. So that's how we create our, our new belief system. So from here, we take everything that we've learned in part one and part two. And then we start to ask ourselves more questions. 
because your limiting beliefs aren't going to be cured in a couple of days. That's just not possible. But what I'm trying to do here, and this is actually, i am actually been having a lot of, a really, a lot of fun with teaching you all this. And I talked about this in this last episode. I've been having a lot of fun with doing this that I'm like, you know what? I'm seeing this a lot across the board. You know, I'm going to go ahead and create a course for people so that they can just use it for something just to kind of get some clarity on some things that are keeping them stuck. So as I was thinking about this, it's like, all right, so this is what we want to do with parts one and two. We learned a bit more about limiting beliefs. We learned a bit more about how our mind and our subconscious functions to help us in our environment and how that really pushes us to create different behaviors and, and different words or different things that we say to ourselves. So I was thinking about how to kind of close this in. Then I was like, you know what? I usually think when someone steps, when someone like reaches out to me, it's like, hey, like I really would love to work with you. You know, what does it look like? And so we start diving into questions about like, you know, what do you want to see? Like, what are some outcomes that you really desire? And one of the things that, com that comes up, and it's really one of my favorite questions, I'll ask them like, hey, you know, who who is someone that is a big hero for you? You know, who is someone that you know that you really, really value and respect. And then I asked them like, okay, what characteristics, what really impresses you about them and how can you start to embody that person? So that's my invitation for you. So think of a time when you were really impressed with someone. Now, what attributes or what characteristics, what value systems do you really value in that person? And how can you embody that for yourself? Because it's not its not a copy and paste. It's usually a, I really value how this person person's tenacity causes them to continue to show up every day. That's one of the things that I, I constantly have to remind myself. And when I get feedback from others, friends, family, it's always does. I love how motivational you are. Like, I love how consistent you are. Which is really nice because what they're saying is like, hey, I value you showing up each and every day. And they're not really putting judgment on, well, that piece of content or that one message or that one pod was trash, but the other ones, they're not doing that. They're just really enjoying me showing up every single day. So it's kind of the same thing for you. You know, if if you have someone in your life that you really respect, let's take a look at their value systems and let's start taking a look at how you can start to embody who that person is on a day to day basis really starting small. All right, because from there, and this is kind of where we get to create our own value systems. This is where we kind of get to create our own roadmap. And if you need something further than a roadmap, you need someone to hold you accountable, someone to hold space for your stuff. You know, that's why, you know, hiring a, a business mentor, a high performance mentor or a coach like myself, or even someone else, that's where this comes to play a really big role. I say this all the time too, like really in a lot of ways, I have to guard you from you. So let me help you by removing you out of the scenario at first so that we can get really real and get really raw about some of the things that you're telling yourself and how to overcome these things. But then I bring you back in when you start to really take care of yourself, your sleep is on point, your nutrition, your fitness, the way that you act, the way that you feel, the way that you're engaging with mental health. Once that is all at a really, really great area or a really great space, then I bring you back in to start really working through that stuff. Because the other thing that you can be doing here as well, because and this kind of goes back to you really taking care of yourself. And, and I and I actually came across this in a book that I read that I really, really loved. It's called Limitless. Uh, again, I can't say enough great things about Jim Quick and the Quick Brain Podcast. But he talks about with your know, limiting beliefs, like creating a like personifying them and, and then creating like a funny name for them. Right. Because if you can do that, where it's like you're kind of making fun of the limiting belief, it kind of allows you to think of them in a way where they have less credence. They have less say about what they're saying and what they do. All right. So this could be anyone. I, I had this ongoing thing growing up and amongst me and my friends, you know, people who we thought just <laughs> we wanted to make fun of were like we would call them Melvins. Right. So in some ways, a lot of my limiting self talk talk. I'll try to personify that into Melvin or that's like Melvin's voice. So when I say something like, hey, no one's really going to listen to this podcast. Like, why haven't you grown to where you thought you were going to grow today? I'll sit back and be like, all right, Melvin, shut your ass up. <laughs> like, I'm having fun with the process because I am trying to be about what I say. And so the process in itself is fulfilling to me. And I know that the outcome will come at some point. Because by doing that, I give that thought less credence. And I and, and not in only doing that, 
you also get to fact check that person. So come up with a with an interesting name, a name that you make fun of, or possibly just a name you're like, all right, Charles. Uh, first of all, also for my listeners out there who are named Melvin and Charles, I got mad love for you. This is not this is not shade or hate, okay? <laughs> but you you get what I'm saying here, all right? And, and this is kind of how we work through these limiting beliefs. And th- and I'm hoping with this series that we're about to close right now that you've gotten to a point where you're like, okay. There are some pretty core stories, core messages that I tell myself on a day-to-day basis. And now that I have the tools to start exploring that, that's where I can be like, okay, do I need a, a mentor, a coach, or do I need someone to help me with some of these limiting beliefs? Because I've said this time and time again, and we'll go ahead and end our Mentorship Monday with this. No successful person has ever said I did this alone. That's not how this works. All right. You know the homework by now. Let's make sure that if something spoke to you, take a screenshot of it. Make sure that you tag us in your stories or whatever. I just want to make sure that like we're taking the education and actually applying it. All right. So much love for you all. I'll catch you on Friday's episode. Let's go.